This event is so important for not only the chamber, but the community. We have women from all over Clarkson coming together, talking about how they got to where they are today. We had Kelly LaFontaine from LaFontaine Automotive, Katie Bowman from Bowman Chevrolet. We had Sarah Schneider, owner of The Fed, which is also a social media celebrity, I guess you could say. And then we had Aubrey Emerson, and she's the owner of the Clarkson Makeup Studio. And they just talked about how, you know, how they got to where they are today, who helped them along the way, who were their mentors. We're really looking forward to incorporating a panel discussion in the future for other events. And I just thought it was a really well-run event, and we're looking forward to the years to come. My favorite part about the event was probably the panel discussion as a whole. I, we just decided to do this this year. You know, generally we had the keynote speakers, so I just thought it was something different and more relatable to the audience, just, you know, talking to these local businesswomen. We have a very special award to announce right now, and this is the Carson Chambers Women Business Leader of the Year. This award is dedicated to honoring women who has shaped the success of her organizations or business and demonstrates leadership, professional achievement, and contributed not only in her workplace, but also in her community. She's a physical therapist, founder of Kids in Motion Pediatric Therapy Services, founded 25 years ago, which has now expanded to four locations. She is dedicated in providing quality therapy services to children, no matter their abilities, and helping them reach their full potential. She's the president of the Huron Valley Optimist Club. She worked with organizations such as Scarlet Smiles, Magic Hug Squares, Blessings in a Backpack, and more. She is always doing what she can to give back to others. She is an inspiration not only because of her success in building her business, but because of her never-ending work to help all children lead, her best, lead their best lives. Please join me in congratulating Mary Heinorn for Women Business Leader of the Year.
we um, we'd love to have this connection in the Clarkston community. Thank you again for giving me this award of Women Business of the Year, and thank you. I'm grateful to the Clarkston Chamber. State Bank. It's over a hundred year old building that we renovated for two and a half years, two and a half painstaking years. <laughs> um, we went through a lot and I learned a lot. Um, I have never owned a restaurant before. Um, I feel like there were a lot of people that were like, uh, you're gonna do what? Huh? You can't do that. Um, and we just kept going and kept going and honestly um, it's been one of the most amazing experiences of my life and I know that this is exactly where I need to be and what I'm supposed to be doing and um, that's a pretty great feeling. So I love being a part of this community. I grew up in Waterford and we moved to Clarkston um, about seven years ago. I am a mother of three. Uh, my oldest is 11, a uh, daughter, and then I have a nine-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. And my oldest has special needs, and so I realized that after we made that choice to move to Clarkston, exactly why, and that was because um, she is exactly where she needs to be. What an amazing community to grow up in, um, the support that she has, and that we have as a family. And it's amazing, like, where you go and the steps that you make um, bring you right to where you're, you know, right to where you're meant to be. And I'm not saying that was easy, and it wasn't with a lot of disappointment and a lot of, um, uh, things that didn't work out, but we we're eventually, um, we we're eventually make it right, right to where we need to be. So, um, and that's how the Fed came about. Um, honestly, we're entrepreneurs, we're business people, both my husband and I, and we knew that we wanted to do something in our own community. And, you know, we didn't think of this beautiful, amazing building would ever come about, um, and it did, and we were so blessed by it. Um, and it has been such an incredible, again, experience that, um, I really, um, I'm really grateful to be a part of. So, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Katie. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Okay, well, I, I think I spoke a little bit in my other um, talk, but um, I'll just tell you maybe a little more personal side to um, who I am. But uh, I have now worked at Bowman Chevrolet and then changed that to Bowman Auto Group for 26 years. So um, Clarkston has been a second home. I don't live here, but people wonderfully have said to me that I'm part of the community and I'm kind of like, you know, grandfathered in or something. So that means a lot to me because I really spend more time in Clarkston than I do at home. You know, when you think about your work day, maybe not the sleeping part, but you know. Um, and I'm a mother of three. I have a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, and a 17-year-old. So in various stages of, you know, life transitioning and I mean, you know, going from college to getting a job, high school to college, that kind of stuff. So um, keeps it really interesting. 
Um, my path at Bowman, uh, you know, like I told you before, I mean, I wasn't expecting to go into business with my dad, but once I did, I loved it. And then I realized that I really needed to go after it in terms of um, more training. I needed more accounting uh, training. I needed um, more business and leadership classes. So I went to Walsh College and I got a master's in finance. They didn't have the MBA available at that time, but I had um, a lot of accounting classes behind that. And I also went to Car National Auto Dealers Association Car Dealer School, and there is such a thing. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you did, right? I know. Um, anyway, and, and this is a funny story. So when I was going to graduate, I went to buy an outfit at the mall nearby. It was in McLean, Virginia, where headquarters are, and I needed some alterations, so I told the woman, you know, she said, what is it for? And I said, oh, it's for graduation. Oh, from what? And I said, car dealer school. And we were talking a little more, and this is where, this was like a long time ago, like 20 years ago, right? So, and she said, oh, are you going to work in Atlantic City? And I was so confused. And then she thought I said, card dealer school. <laughs> So I was like, you really have to be careful with that, and I should now, I even did it again, I said car dealer school, the automotive dealer school, to be the one in charge. Yeah, that's right, so anyway. Um, so, you know, there have been those things through the years with being a woman in, in business, and uh, I think we're going to talk about that today, which will be, you know, really good conversation, and I'm just really thankful to be here with all of you wonderful women, so thank you. Well, I'm with Katie. You heard a lot about me already, so I'll keep this sweet. Um, a little bit personal, too, for me. I'm a mother of three. I have uh, three beautiful children. God bless me. So I have a 22-year-old, 21-year-old, and a 19-year-old. So they are my life, my husband. Lou is my crazy every day, and he came today to support, so thank you, my mom. So thank you, guys. Like I said, the team of angels is awesome. But I, one of the love that I have is, you know, living in Clarkson, I've been here for probably 25 years. Um, I went to school in Waterford and wanted to raise our kids. Um, if anyone knows our organizations, they know that um, Clarkson is not centrally located. For us, we should be like in Northville, Novi. I choose to drive a different distance because I love Clarkson so much. It's a community that my kids have been raised in, um, in the schools and everything else. I, I couldn't imagine anywhere else. I mean, it was time my husband was ready to move and that, or I motivated him to move. <laughs> I'll be honest. But um, we were really looking, and for him, his businesses are in Rochester and Sterling Heights and Port Huron. And, you know, that way and mine are the opposite. And we almost lived in Oakland County, and I looked at him and I said, how can we not? So we literally moved on the other side of M15. So we didn't get far. <laughs> we moved like a mile, literally, it's one of us. But, I do truly love this community. Even walking in here today, you know, you see Al, he's amazing. He does everything he can for us. You know, Deanna with the Carmanos, and I thought, oh my goodness, she's thanking me for the van and, you know, what we could do with the cancer and picking up the patients, to, you know, even Aubrey sitting next to me, you know, she reached out to each and every one of us and wanted to make us feel special. So literally at 8.30 in the morning, we all were at Aubrey's place and she just got her team together. And to make us feel special, she got all of her makeup done. So it was, I left there, I'm like, thank you. <laughs> it was so nice. So just those things where we're all, you know, talking and collaborating and saying, you know, this could be something that, you know, talking in front of everyone and what are the you know, questions and we hope we do the same thing, inspire, and I hope that somebody gets something out of this. So. It made us feel very special, so thank you. And I know Julie talked about um, Habitat for uh, Clarkson, and the whole team sitting in that table right there, we did it as a team building uh, experience, and it was something that we still talk about to this day. So it's, if anyone hasn't done it, volunteer it is definitely worth it. I and mean, we did it, and it was like below zero weather outside. I'm like, whoa, you're giving me tools? I'm like, I thought it was decorating, you know, but no. <laughs> was, I think in colors, if anyone knows me. So this was uh, crazy. So great experiences so anything that you know you look into each and every single person in this community you know that you know here on Valley Optimist I saw Mary congratulations so there's just so much and so many connections and so much support and I think that's what really this is about that's that's why this is my favorite you know moment it's women in businesses it, I just my husband hates hearing this I'm like I feel like empowering women this is so important he's like oh god golly seriously <laughs> but it is so to feel all of us united, I just hope that we can all do a little bit in our part to um, you guys leave today with something that you haven't to think you already know and learn. Well, I'm Aubrey. I own Clarkson Makeup Studio, and I also have a location, uh, a second location in Royal Oak. 
And you guys, I'm so happy to be here today. I'm really honored. I look out and I see familiar faces and familiar eyebrows. <laughs> and, uh, I love what I do, and I love that I could bring a specialized craft to such a wonderful community. And when I first started, and when I was first pounding the pavement, I see Peg Roth over there, and um, I had to pitch to her and Bob what I wanted to put in Clarkston. And at first they looked at me and they're like, you want to put a what? Where? You want to do just makeup? I'm like, just makeup and eyebrows? I said, trust me, it's going to work. I know, I've researched a demographic. I know it's going to be good. And um, my daughter looked at me, you know, with hope and admiration. And she said to me, um, you're not going to fail, Mom. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to make it. And <laughs> when I take my kids around this community now, they're like, Mom, are you famous? Like, you know everybody. You talk, I'm like, no. But I own a business in this wonderful town. I have a wonderful family. I have wonderful children. And I love being a mother as well. And I love that we're all working. We are hard working mothers up here, you know? And um, we all have that wonderful thing in common. So to be sitting up here with this caliber of women, I am truly honored. I, and I was honestly surprised to be sitting here speaking with them and am um, and, and humbled by the experience. So thank you. So Katie, we're gonna start with you first. Okay. Um, what is the most, what do you think is the most significant barrier to female leadership in this day and age? Oh, I gotta say it louder. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. What do you think, Katie, is the most significant barrier to female leadership in this day and age? Well, I have thought about this through the years, and I know to my core that women can do anything that men can do. Um, anything. It's, you know, put your minds to it, you can do it. But we are mostly, and I'm gonna, it's gonna sound, I'm gonna stereotype a little bit, so bear with me. But I really feel that we are the caretakers and more importantly, the list keepers. And I don't think that men, oh, I see my friend, okay. Brandon, thank you. Um, so I had a conversation with Brandon and uh, it was really kind of solidified what I wanted to say about this. Um, in that it doesn't mean men don't help or think about things to do or any of that stuff, but I think women are more detail oriented and we want to take care of all the aspects of our lives. Our, our families, our children, whether it be aging parents, um, a neighbor, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, you don't have to have children to be in this, you know, group of people that keep lists all the time. And there are probably men that do it too, so I'm not trying to take that away from men, but, so I think when faced with a promotion that requires longer hours and that kind of sacrifice, I think for a woman, if you're caretaking to any degree, and it depends maybe on how much, you know, how many kids you have, aging parents, you know, neighbors, whatever you're doing, you think twice about it because you know how much that will require of you and the sacrifices that the people that count on you will have to make with you if you decide to do that. So I don't think it gets talked about enough. I think it's a little tricky, like I said, because it brings in possible stereotypes. Um, and I really by no means mean to say that it's every woman this way or every man, you know, not keeping lists or helping out, but I had a good talk with Brandon Gentilly, that was great, and you really inspired me because he was saying how much he noticed his wife, you know, having some stress and then how you realize that she's keeping all these lists in her head. And I think that we don't realize that as women, but they're going all the time, all the time, running through, right? And so it's something that I know we can get through and find flexibility in different positions that you know, you're offered. I think that's going to be more and more part of the future um, of workplaces having flexibility, which I think is important. Um, and so I think that's, to me, in my mind, the only barrier that I think really holds us back because it's so pervasive for most women. So. And now I have a tough question for Kelly. It's probably the toughest question. So, um, what woman inspires you and why? That is, that's sorry, the, Kelly. I'm like, okay, yes. <laughs> we're catching on. Um, I actually am blessed to have two women that inspire me. And what, first of all, is my mom, Maureen Lafontaine. 
Um, she is not only my best friend, she is not only my boss or my mentor, um, but she's my mother as well. So, you know, those kind of things, if you look at it, in our industry, especially in business, you know, like Katie said, in the automotive industry, it's male dominant, you know, and I looked at my mom back then, she was a pioneer in a male dominant role, and she led the way for women, you know, and she paved that for us, so I'll be forever grateful for that. She's always taught me to never be um, afraid to fail, like, meaning that if you fail, and you did not succeed, you learn something. But you don't do anything if you don't do anything at all. You don't learn anything. So she was always an advocate of trying something and being okay to fail and being accepting that. So that was very important, not only in life but in business or home and business. She also encouraged me, she empowered me, she enabled me to be the person that I am today. She's taught me to surround myself with good people and success will come, you know, and love will come when you surround yourself with good people. So that was very important. My other one is my daughter. My baby girl Savannah is a young woman right now that inspires me daily. Her heart, her dedication, her passion, her ability to stay true to herself just amazes me on a daily basis. And you know, somebody, a wise woman told me that um, reach for the stars, baby girl, but keep your feet on the ground. Um, I will never forget that now. And it's really about being humble and being true to yourself and being real. So she does that, so you cannot tell that I'm not a proud to be a part of three women generations of business that are thriving. So I'm very honored. Sarah, what advice would you give to young women who would like to succeed in the workplace? Um, to live fearlessly. Um, and this is going to sound cliche, but follow your dreams. Um, I'm a dreamer, and I have had many, many, many dreams throughout my life. And, um, and when we say young, everyone in this room is young. Um, we all, every day, um, we're all learning and growing, no matter where you're at in your career or in life. Um, and we all have a voice. We all have influence. Um, we all can make an impression, um, whether it's to your neighbor sitting next to you, or um, I have a social media platform where I speak to nearly 80,000 people almost on a daily basis. Um, and using your voice for good. Um, take what you know and take who you are and your story and use that for the greater good. Where you're at right now in your life is working for the greater good. It is your story. And um, there are hurdles and there are doors that close. Um, and honestly, that is all good. It's all good. It's all part of your story and part of who you're going to be. Honestly, the things that I'm most grateful for in life right now are the struggles, are the things that failed, are the things that directed me in a different direction. Um, when one door closes, certainly more open. And that has been true in my life and in business. And it has brought me to you know where I am today. So go for it. Go for it. Follow the dream. And you know what? If it fails, you tried. You did it. And something else is going to come out of that. I can promise you that. It may not be where you thought you would be. Um, I, didn't, I couldn't have dreamed this big, honestly. Um, and I also couldn't have dreamed as big as having this, um, you know, beautiful personal life and um, family, but it all came with um, going for it and trying it and being let down a lot, um, a lot. But I can promise you one thing, that that is, it's a good thing. Again, it's all part of, it's building who you are. Um, so, that's it. <laughs> Aubrey gets the first two-part question. Yes. How has your mentality changed since you first started your career, Aubrey? I'm going to steal it from her. Thank you. I'm <laughs> catching up. Part one, and then it'll go back. Okay. Um, okay, so this is an interesting two-part question for me because when I first started my career, I didn't do makeup. I, I went to college, graduated college, and started in uh, marketing and advertising. So for me, makeup was something that I always knew I wanted to do, but I didn't know how to get there. And a, a couple of years into corporate America, and I couldn't see myself sitting behind a computer anymore. It just wasn't, it wasn't creative for, enough for me, and it, it, it wasn't fulfilling. I knew there was something more out there. So um, I'd like to reference my mother for a second. And when she took me to school, and when I was in the second grade, 
um, she didn't have any makeup on. And so <laughs> she told me that I told her, Mom, can you please never take me to school without makeup on again? <laughs> I was in the second grade. She said, right there, I knew you were going to be a makeup artist. <laughs> So for me, starting in corporate America and marketing, it actually gave me a good uh, forefront and platform for being an entrepreneur. And the second phase of my career is already 14 years in. And I thought I was at 28 too old to start something, uh, to start my passion, something I truly loved. And I, I was wrong. I mean, it's, it's terrifying. You, you, you fall. Like Sarah said, you, you have a fear of failure, but those failures make you who you are as a person, as business, as, as everything. So. Is this the moment? Yes, it is. <laughs> so there, there was some sort of shift then as you rose to the ranks. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think rose to the ranks is a really funny term, in my opinion. Um, because I don't see myself that way. I see myself as a hardworking, determined individual um, who wants to make everybody who walks through my door in the studio feel like the best, most enhanced version of themselves. That is my goal. When I get done doing your eyebrows and my client is sitting there and they're clapping because they're so happy about how their arches look, that makes my day. You guys have no idea. <laughs> so as I rose through the ranks, um, my very first year in business, I promised myself and I told myself that I wouldn't say no. Um, whatever I was asked to do in the community or um, by someone or to donate, uh, my answer was always going to be yes. I worked, I said yes to everything. I worked like a dog <laughs> that first year. But it was, a, it was a great year of establishing myself. And then as I progressed further, I, I got to be a little bit more, more picky. So I you know, tried to, just this year, um, take a little bit more time for myself and to spend time with loved ones and um, my kids and, and make sure I'm present more because I do work a lot. So putting in that, all that hard work in the forefront gives me more time and opportunity today to spend time and do things that are very, very important to me. Katie? Yes. How do you best achieve work-life balance? Well, not easily, but um, as Aubrey said, there are times you kind of you know, put the pedal down and go for it at work. And then there are times that you have to re-engage at home. Um, hopefully you're trying to find a balance every single day uh, between the two. But I would say primarily, it's really having an amazing team, um, both at work and home. And I'm blessed to have that. I have an amazing um, you know, team of management at work. And then at home, I have a wonderful husband. And my kids are supportive. And I really enlisted them in part of the work that it takes to get through the week early. So um, we do meal prep on the weekends and we make it a family activity. Um, we plan out meals. Like, you know, it might not always be like we get every meal like set, but we just like, we know what we're doing, who's responsible for doing what. And then I've also been blessed through the years to have wonderful women in my life um, to share that path with and also to have a phone call to say, Oh my God, I'm not going to make it to pick up. Can you, you know, pick up at me for me? And that's invaluable. So I think you need to really create teams. And when they say it takes a village, I think it's not just for raising kids. It's for raising a business. It's for, you know, just our daily lives. So I really believe that's been my success in doing that. Thanks. Ellie, same question. How do you achieve work-life balance these days? Um, it's important to prioritize work-life balance. I know that um, for me, our family has faith, family, friends. It's really how we prioritize our life. So in faith, I believe that God has blessed me in so many ways. And in doing that, then it means that I'm empowered to do something and make a difference. So I believe in that. I started a, new, a nonprofit, You Can Survive, or sitting on a couple boards. I found myself on three non nonprofits. And you have to juggle that and what that looks like. Um, family, you know, I, like I said, I have a husband, I'm a, I'm a wife, I have, I'm a mother of three, 
I, but there's so much more than just that, you know, I'm a sister, I'm an aunt, I'm a cousin, you know, there's so many dynamics in our family. My immediate family literally is 26, my extended family, my mom and dad are one of seven of each, so I have over 200, you know, going in there. For, um, and I married an only child for a man. <laughs> so, but getting into that, it, because of that, it's really, we have this motto of relax and accept the crazy, and we really do. I mean, like, it's what's, what's happening today in this crazy world, and, and we just laugh about it. You have to be supportive of each other, whatever that goes into, and know that we'll get through it together. United we will. Same with as work, you know, we have 1,300 employees. You know, there's many different brick and mortar that we have underneath us that, there's been challenging times, especially in 2008, you know, when we looked at that and never, our parents couldn't prepare us, or I know people prepare us what it meant to go bankrupt in the manufacturing, and what did that look like for us? And, you know, thankfully we had the support at home where we can actually say, okay, we need to focus a little bit more on obviously what's going on in the business side of it, but it is surrounding yourself with the people, and that's what's the most important thing. When we were going through that time, you know, if, if we weren't worried at night and what was keeping us up at night wasn't the, you know, 30 different brands that we have and the brick and mortar, it was the 1,300 employees that we have, our family and their families, and that was really the most important thing for us. So prioritizing the right things. So when you're looking at cutting and the first thing you do is you get in a your boardroom of executive, amazing, so you surround yourself with amazing, smart people, smarter than you, and then you're doing well. <laughs> so in this room, and the one thing we said was, there is no way we're cutting because the most biggest expense anyone knows in a business is personnel. And it really truly is besides, you know, in our automotive business, it's, you know, personnel, advertising, and inventory, but we would touch personnel. So we said, okay, what else do we have to do? We went dark advertising. We were spending multi-million dollars in advertising. We cut it first thing, went dark. The next thing is inventory. Let's cut it out. Let's figure this. Let's... So we got really strategic and realized, let's figure out how do we get this done and united with our people, it was really the most important thing. So you find that work-life balance of, of, of that aspect of it. But when Katie was saying, like, okay, well, surround yourself with amazing women that help you, it, you know, it made me uh, think of this bad mom moment, you know, <laughs> and I have to share because it's crazy. But I had this bad mom moment where my kids are wonderful. They're amazing, so I did not harm them in the bad way. <laughs> but I did have it where it was going through the 08 time. I was out in Lansing. We were in closed doors and meetings, and my girlfriend was going to pick up. She's like, and she was an attorney. She's like, I'm caught. She's like, I'm caught. I'm, I'm in court. I can't get out. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. I remembered I, I met this amazing man, Doyle, and the optimist three years before that, and said, okay, well, I know he used to, you know, take his grandkids and they went through divorce so he doesn't get to do that anymore and he drives for us now. I called Doyle up. I'm like, hey Doyle, do you know where Notre Dame prep is? <laughs> I need your help. And he went and picked him up, but I had this phone call and I text the kids, you know, communication, they don't get it until they get out. And he said, I can't be there, but you're not going to sit around because sometimes you have to wait for mom because I could be late. And I said, you don't have to wait. You guys will be able to get home. Don't worry. I sent Doyle, and she's like, who's Doyle? And I'm like, he's amazing, he's like a grandpa, you guys will love him. And at the same time, Doyle's calling me saying, the security guy is not letting, the security guard is not letting me in. Kelly, I know you said their names are Savannah and Mackenzie and Zach, but I don't know their last name, I know it's not yours. And they asked me what grade they're in, but I know I don't, I don't know that. <laughs> And it doesn't look really well. I'm like, hold on, Doyle, hold on one second. So Anna clicks back in. She goes, Mom, I found Doyle. He's with the security guard. And he's in a pedophile van. Seriously, you sent him in a pedophile van and he's asking, he's opening the door. He's asking my friends if he wants a ride. Oh my God, Mom, don't ever do this to me again. So those are the moments where, I, you know, they survived. And I'll fast forward it. This gentleman actually moved them in with me every every year to college with them. Every single year, this man is this important. Every sport he was there, he became their grandfather. You know, like another addition. So they were not traumatized. But at the moment, I drove home and it's just like pouring rain. I thought, oh my god, I'm terrible. I just ditched the kids and thought, what? Whatever, wing it. <laughs> I'm like, I threw them up in the air and hope they landed. And I'm like, so there are moments where it's you just try. You know, and it's, there's no perfect balance, but you just try. And that's all you gotta do is you wake up each day and you just keep trying. And one other thing, and I think this is important, just wanna, I know I can talk, it's happiness within. So don't forget yourself too. Put yourself first because all those other aspects of it, if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not meal prepping, you're not working out, you're not prioritizing yourself, none of the other ones will you truly feel successful. So make sure you prioritize yourself as well.
Sarah, can you tell us um, how you got to where you are today and also who and or what helped you along the way? Sure. Thanks. I feel like I have done so many different things in my life. I feel like um, every time I drive by somewhere or talk about something, I'm like, I've done that. I worked there. I lived there. Um, I took off um, and I moved to California for four years because I was, again, chasing a dream. Um, and I did so many amazing things out there and I had this like crazy awesome experiences again all part of the story and um, and then I was like one day I was like yeah I'm gonna move home and I picked up and moved home um, oh and before that I lived in Arizona for a year same thing and I was gonna move to New York and I was I just was this um, always chasing you know always chasing something and um, really um, not not afraid of um, moving somewhere all by myself so I feel like now I look back and um, that dinner party that I went to in California where the chef was um, serving, it, it was like so amazing and I was like, what's he doing? And oh my gosh, this amazing meal and he's cooking this private dinner at this like beautiful estate on how I got here. Um, but I am so intrigued by this and um, so by food and restaurants and design and um, I began this really great love. I, I've had a love of design since I was young. Um, I didn't spend my money on clothes. I spent my money on like new bedding. And I dyed my carpet when my parents went on vacation uh, from seafoam green, I'm dating myself, to like gray, uh, and uh, painted my walls. And I was always doing something. I was always had this great love for that. So um, I look back on everything that I did, and now I'm like, I don't sense it all came full circle um, and I don't think the circle is complete I think I'm still um, moving along in, in that rotating direction but it really is amazing to look back and see that everything I kind of dabbled in and um, I worked I did auto shows for nine years um, I was a spokesperson for Nissan and I got to travel the country and I got to spend 10 days at a time in these amazing cities and meet great people and um, I look back now and I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I was a photographer for years. I had my own business and I'm like, that's why I can take great pictures now and post them on Instagram. And I have this growing social media um, uh, influential platform that I have now. And all because, and it, and it grew very slowly and very organically. Um, it took years. It took six years to build that platform. Um, it did not happen overnight. And am I getting off track? Okay. <laughs> Um, anyways, it, it took it took a long time, and um, so, anyways, um, people who had um, a part in that, you know, it, it just takes one person to believe in you. Um, from my honestly, from my cheerleading coach, who said, um, "I believe in you. I believe that you're more than just the kid that um, stares out the window and can't pay attention." Because I was this creative artist who really really couldn't, um, they didn't know what to do with me. Um, she said, I believe in you and I'm gonna make you uh, the captain. And I went on to find these people in my life um, sporadically that just said, I believe in you. Um, down to, we had a um, special event um, with, uh, and our chef was there and I, I turned around and it was one of those moments in life that I honestly will always remember. I turned around and I said to him, I was like, you know this is why I wanted to do this, right? Was to do like really cool events and be a part of the community and, um, and do beautiful things. And he was like, he turned and he said to me, I know, I know you, I see you, and I love you anyway. And I was like, that, right there, that's everything, that is everything. And he was like, okay, I was like, no, you don't understand, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard, for somebody to say, I see you, I know you and I love you anyway. I see your crazy ways. I see you all over the place and dreaming big and wanting to do this and wanting to do that. And we're with you and we love you. Um, so I feel like it just takes that one person and we as women, I know I'm talking too long, can be such a huge part of to the woman sitting next to you. It takes one thing. Use, again, use your voice. Don't be afraid to, even if it's just giving a compliment. Um, how good do compliments feel? Um, and just saying it. So many times we think it, but we don't say it. Um, say it and believe, um, put it out there. Um, you see somebody struggling, come alongside them. 
Um, again, it just takes that one person to say, you know what, I believe in you. I see something in you. Um, and we can do that for each other. Um, and I wanted to say really quick that we can all learn from each other. And I don't know. <laughs> I fly by the seat of my pants. But I was like, that's good. I should feel proud. I should do that with pride. Help me. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're not. I have to do it perfect. Every, every week. I mean, but I really don't want you to think. But no, I know. Like, the weeks that go well is that's when I've done it. You know? Yeah. And it's easier. No, it's good. Right. But, right. And you're like, re like really good at that. And I might be good at something totally different. 100%. So the point is, is that we're not perfect. And I think that we are so caught up right now with social media um, on being at perfectionism. And it is. Um, while social media can be a great platform to grow your business, um, and I would be happy to talk to any any of you more about that, um, it is it's an amazing tool, it really is. But I really want you to know that it um, there is there are, it is not perfect. Uh, there is a mess behind me, I guarantee you, in every photo that you see, um, and that there's things in life that. I'm going through, that we're all going through, that are tough and hard and not perfect, and we're all learning, we're all growing, we can all learn from each other. Um, so I just, I just had to say that. Thank you. Aubrey, same question. Where did you, how did you get to where you are today and who or what helped you along the way? I forgot we were both answering this Sorry. question, by the way. <laughs> Good job, Sarah. You got this. Um, so, can you repeat that question? <laughs> How did you get to where you are today, and who or what helped you along the way? Okay, so it's not a clear-cut, straight path. I took um, we'll call it a roller coaster ride to get here. Um, like I said earlier, I started in advertising, went back to school, opened my own business. Um, so there were many different variables along the way, but um, I do have to say that I know I have people who love me, who stand behind me, and no matter if they think that it's, that it's crazy or not, or um, they're, they're going to be there. My father is sitting here in the audience today. <laughs> And he put his blood, sweat, and tears into opening the studio for me. And um, every one of my family members did, painted. Um, I, I said recently, there are drawings on the walls in the studio underneath the paint where my kids, they hated being there after a certain amount of time. But I would let them take pencils and draw wherever they wanted to. And knowing that they were, I was just going to cover it up with paint, but it made them happy. I, I'm here because of them, and I'm here because of love and support from this community. So it's 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 been a, a really great a really great ride, so to speak. Another big question for Katie: What's the best piece of advice that you've received related to business, and how have you implemented it in the workplace? Yep, that's a good question. I actually have two pieces of advice, so I hope that's okay. Um, because the first piece of advice was from my dad, and he basically just told me, give back to the community that is supporting you. And he started that when he came here and started Bowman Chevrolet in 1983, and we've continued that, and been so glad to have supported so many organizations and hosting events at the Bowman Auto Center, which is, by the way, available for um, charities and things, you know, people to use because we've got it. It's a big showroom and why not use it? And um, so it's exciting to have helped my Habitat Clarkston. We grew an event um, for Easter Seals that outgrew us. That's the goal. Love it when we outgrow uh, an event and they have to move on to a bigger venue. Um, so that has been really important to me. And then the second piece of advice was when I worked at Ralph Lauren in New York City, I was lucky enough to work with um, some of the top leaders, not every day, but in some special projects. And Peter Strom, who was the CEO at the time, uh, told me and a small group of people to surround yourself with the very best people that you can. And I believe, you know, we've all kind of spoken about that, and that's absolutely what I have um, in spades at Bowman Auto Group now. And he also said, do not be afraid to hire people that are smarter than you. And he used the example, he said, for instance, 
I am not the smartest person in this room. And for a CEO to be able to say that and really be okay with it really struck me, you know, a long time ago, beginning of my career, and I have continued to do that because you're only as good as the people around you, and I think that when you aren't afraid to hire someone smarter, um, that says a lot about you as a leader, and so those are the two things that I've heard and learned and tried to take into my own life. This one's a little less heavy. So Kelly, we know you have a passion for fashion and automotive things, So, but what is the most interesting trend that you found for 2019? In any regard, um, in, in the industry, there's definitely a, a paradigm shift. A lot of you will notice that the domestic um, automakers are getting rid of the sedans and going over to the crossover. So you see that as a more of what are they're listening to what everyone wants and, and they're actually supplying that and they're getting competitive. <coughs> and you watch them get a little bit leaner, and you're watching the Coppola collaborations, which years ago you wouldn't have seen, and right now they're collaborating. If you're looking at like Toyota and BMW are together on Supra and the Z4, and then you're looking at like um, VW and, um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think of it, VW and Ford are partnering with autonomous vehicles. So they're trying to be competitive, and the way they do that, they have to use their resources and combine and collaborate. So those are the things that I love seeing. Um, I do see that, you know, I, I, my industry of sales, new car sales are going to be going down now because of that, but the used car sales will be going up, as well as a lot of the buzz. I mean, if you haven't been around the last 30, 60, 90 days of the Detroit Auto Show, and you hear this doom and gloom, and oh my goodness, it's the last one, and really, no, it's not. Behind the scenes, there's a team that has been four years out making this decision and being prepared ahead of it, because they have such a... Uh, an obligation, I guess you could say, to bring the revenue and the economy to Detroit. And if you look at it, there was over $450 million this last January that came in from the auto show. That is equivalent for two Super Bowls that comes in. So it's important for them to stay ahead, to not be afraid of change, and not to be able to adapt and be diversified and roll it out and be prepared for it. So um, anyone that wants to like pull out of their desk and think that change we can get around it is, is sadly mistaken. So they're looking forward to the technology. They're looking forward to the autonomous vehicles. They're looking forward to the indoor outdoor displays. So this, this um, 2020 in June, they're going to be rolling out the new auto show and it's going to be new and approved. So those are things that I'm actually looking forward to. So you'll see a lot. Um, I was talking to Tabby, and, and she was telling me that. I said, where are you guys going? She's like, we're going on field trips. I'm like, where? She's like, we're going to Lollapalooza. I'm like, I think my kids there. Where are we going? And she's like, we want to see how to get the outdoor displays. Not saying that's going to get to that level, but they, they really are going out there and thinking outside the box. They're not just thinking, OK, we've been in Geneva of a motor show. We've been here. We've been there. Let's, let's recreate what the world's doing. No, the world needs to shift. So I love that Detroit wants to be the edge. They want to be the leaders, and that's really, I think, what they're going to be doing. Okay. Oh, good news. Aubrey, what have you learned about leadership, entrepreneurship, and mentoring others? That's a very good question. <laughs> um, leader, let's start with leadership. Um, I believe, honestly, Emily, that I was I, I was born a leader um, from, from the get-go, albeit sports, um, teaching others. I really, really enjoy it. Um, I was always the hardest worker in the room, the hardest player on the court, um, the captain of every sports team. Um, but I can't explain to you guys where it came from. It was just an innate drive in me to be a leader. And when you talk to my employees over here, um, Alyssa and Lexi, I hope that I am a good leader to them daily. I want to set a good example, show them how to interact and talk to clients, and you know, be that person, be that um, a mentor that they look up to and that they can admire and say, yep, that's my boss. <laughs> so what's the second part, please? I'm in mentorship, mentoring others. So for mentoring others, um, like I just said, I want to set a good example and hope that I can have people um, emulate my work style, my work ethic, and that I can set a good example for everybody.
So I know Sarah, you talked a little bit about your path, but um, do you want to tell us a little bit more? And also, but more, I guess, a little bit more detail about was there a pivotal moment that took you in a certain direction? Sure. Yeah, I think I um, kind of answered that throughout, but. Um, really in talking about the Fed and how I got there and, and how that came about, um, I just purely came from a love of gathering people. Um, I love to have people around my table, in my kitchen, at my home. I was always looking for um, a different reason to have a gathering or throw a party. I love community. I love women. I love bringing people together. And I think that I it just started to organically grow into something and I knew that um, I knew that I needed to do something more with it. And I feel like it's given me this, um, just this amazing um, little kind of spot in the community where I can say, okay, what can we do beyond bringing people in um, for great food or great drink? Um, it's, it's more about the feeling of what they're gonna get when they walk in through those doors. Um, everybody is fighting some kind of battle. Everybody is going through something. And if we can take that moment and turn that into an amazing experience where they walk in and um, and they feel good about where they're at. Um, and that all came with the design. I really wanted people to love where they were. Um, I literally, every corner of that building, um, and my, my best friend who's holding my phone over there, taping. She loves to be called out. Um, you know, she came over and was on her hands and knees with me arranging tile. Um, like we were on, we had the tile, I was like to the tile, give me your knee pads, I need them. It's my turn. Yeah. He was like, oh boy. And um, you know, we were writing those letters and working so hard every corner of that place. Not because, um, because I wanted people to feel something when they walked through the doors. I wanted them to love where they were at. I wanted them to feel like they were in really an extension of my home. Um, not my home, but um, they were in um, this very comfortable, um, hopefully beautifully um, aesthetic building um, that would make them feel something and maybe forget about whatever they were fighting or whatever they were going through um, and they were able to connect with someone on that day and um, so yeah, I, did I answer the question? Was there, was there anything pivotal though? Like anything, so no, anything like any one thing that um, my corner? Yeah, the defining moment was um, finding the right place in our community. Um, it was honestly, um, that was it. It was the right place at the right time. And we had to write, Dawn's here. Dawn, I saw, woo -hoo, here she is. Uh, um, Dawn Warner, I mean, you know, we had to write out what our intentions were for the building. So it wasn't just like, okay, yes, here, you can, you know, you can buy the building, you can do whatever you with, we want with it. But they really wanted to know, which I think is really amazing um, of the Clarkson State Bank, that they really wanted to know who was buying it, what their plans were, um, what were they going to do with this staple building downtown, and nobody knew who we were or what we were going to do with it. And talking about somebody believing in you, um, they they believed in us. Um, they saw something in us and believed what we were going to do with this was going to be good. Um, it was time for a change. It was time for something new to, to go in there. They realized it for their business that um, you know they could go down to their other building and that they were they were going to give up this prized, beautiful building that that they had their name on. And that was a huge weight for us. That was something. And to take this building that's such a staple downtown and to do something with it. I mean. We had, um, it was a really big deal, and I did not take it lightly. Like I said, it was two and a half years of making this something that our community could be proud of, um, and we had our name attached. So, you know, I had to like, okay, this is who I am, this is what I'm gonna do with it, and, no, and nobody, they were like, what is going on? What are you doing with that building? And they were telling me that all the time on social media. I was like, just wait, just be patient. I promise you, it'll be good, so. Um, yeah, that was it, that was it. You know, right place, right time, um, and that really is, um, that really is a big part of it, so. Thank you, ladies. All right, I think we're all set, you guys. That was Thank awesome. You. Thank you. All right. discussion. We generally have a keynote speaker for those of you who you know, have, have come in the past. But, so thank you guys so much for being here. We really appreciate it. It's just great to hear from you. And
Yeah. Tell me more about what you are and everything. So thank you guys so much.